What's going on? It's Mike T. Nelson from ExtremeHumanPerformance.com and today's little video is some cool little nutrition things I picked up. Um, I always wondered what it would be like to have sort of private conversations with uh, some of the top people in the field and I was lucky enough last night to talk to Dr. Lonnie Lowry. You probably know him from Team Muscle and from many other sites he's written for over various years on the internet. Really, really knowledgeable guy, PhD, also one of the few people who has a PhD and an RD. And he also lifts himself, so very cool there. So some of the topics we talked about last night, which I just wanted to share with you here. Um, there's a couple studies showing that cholesterol uh, may actually help with muscle growth. So probably like anything else in physiology, if you're down here on the low end, yeah, probably not gonna respond too good. If you're kinda up in the middle, eh, probably gonna be pretty good. If you get up in the high end, mm, probably not so good. So cholesterol probably responds just like that. If you've got a very, very low cholesterol, which most people in America don't, eh, probably not gonna be the best for health. If you're in kinda this average middle range, probably gonna be all right. Start getting up in the super high end, eh, probably not so good. Um, but so far it looks like from the papers I can find and from Dr. Lowry found, um, three of them are from the same lab, uh, which is definitely interesting. Um, they showed more of a positive correlation. So as cholesterol went up, up into a point, it seemed to be pretty good for muscle growth. Uh, one of the other studies that just came out showed that mm, maybe not so good. And again, these studies are just looking at a correlation. So it hasn't so far yet uh, been shown as a cause and effect. So showing that cholesterol is directly related to uh, increasing muscle mass. So I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, for most people, you probably already know that uh, blood levels of cholesterol are not really related to your dietary intake of cholesterol. So if you're eating lots of eggs, in most people, again, there's a few outliers, um, it's probably not going to spike your cholesterol levels in terms of blood levels, so what you would get back on a testing score, all that much. So uh, most people are probably just fine, again, eating their eggs for breakfast, having some cheese on occasion. Most time, really not going to probably push up uh, blood cholesterol levels all that much. Some other cool stuff we talked about is the mTOR pathway. And most of you have probably seen this lately in relation to the amino acid leucine. So leucine is an amino acid that seems to directly stimulate this little pathway. And this pathway is one of the, the primary ones for protein synthesis. So protein synthesis is another way of adding more proteins to the muscles therefore making the muscles bigger. So in short, in English, you can stimulate the mTOR pathway more. You should see an increase in muscle mass also. So that's pretty cool. And we also talked about maybe uh, insulin is also possibly needed, maybe by the mTOR pathway, maybe by a separate pathway um, for increasing muscle mass. And again, as always, comes down to calories are king. So if you're not eating enough calories, still lifting, working really hard in the gym, probably not gonna see an increase in muscle mass because adding muscle is an extremely uh, metabolically intensive process. So when you're in the gym, you're lifting, you're giving your body the stimulus to increase muscle and also increase strength. Um, but if you don't have the raw materials there, it's not gonna be as good. Uh, one of the things Dr. Lowry uses a lot in his talks, which I've seen, which I like a lot, and I'm gonna steal from him, is the analogy of construction workers. So you can imagine you've got a lot of construction workers, they're gonna go build up this new house. So all the construction workers show up, and they look around, and there's no raw materials. Obviously your house isn't gonna get built very fast without any raw materials. So you can think of the construction workers as a stimulus. So in this case, weight training. So we go out and weight train, it's enabling sort of the construction workers to show up to the site to build your new house, add some muscle. But if there's no fuel for them to use or no uh, raw materials for them to build with, 
I eat calories, yeah, probably not going to get a lot done. So hopefully that makes sense. So you need to supply the workers. So you need to apply the stimulus, training hard in the gym, and then you need to apply calories. So fuel for the machines and also the raw materials to build your new house. Um, talked about how protein is not necessarily evil. Um, it's just another macronutrient. Again, literature is debatable, but it seems the old adage of you know one gram per pound of body weight. It's probably pretty good for most people. So if you're not eating enough calories, even if you ramp up your protein to 300, 400, some crazy 500 grams a day, it's probably not going to be that beneficial. You're probably better off making sure you have sufficient protein and then increasing your calories again if you're really trying to add mass or add muscle. And what else we got here? Also talked about how, and I've wondered this for years too, if you're diabetic, right? So the definition of a diabetic, someone has a really hard time processing carbohydrates. So why would the ADA, the recommended diet for people with diabetes be mostly carbohydrates? Never understood that. Didn't make a lot of sense to Dr. Lowry either. So um, I think of it in terms of metabolic flexibility. So that I'm researching at the University of Minnesota. So if you're a diabetic, right, you're very metabolically inflexible to carbohydrates. So what that means is if you take in carbohydrates, your body has a really hard time processing them. And you may have some other ill consequences from that. So you'd probably be better off going with more protein and more fats. So what also you can look at is on the flip side. So very metabolically inflexible diabetics, very hard time with carbohydrates. If we go all the way to the other end of the spectrum, someone who's very healthy should be very metabolically flexible. They should be able to process uh, fats, should be able to process carbohydrates very easily. Their body should be able to flex, move back and forth between those two fuel sources very easily. So that could be also a marker of health. So, so that's one thing I'm working on. So, so there's a bunch of other stuff we talked about, but that's just a basic overview. So the kind of the takeaways are, probably don't be too worried about actual food cholesterol levels. Heck, it may even be good for increasing muscle mass. Um, the mTOR pathway, which has been studied for quite a while now, um, probably one of the main pathways for muscle growth. So the way to stimulate that pathway, maybe with just the amino acid leucine, uh, newer studies show that you probably need other amino acids to stimulate all the other pathways. So again, it comes down to protein. Protein is good. Probably about one gram per pound of body weight. Somewhere around there is probably going to be pretty good. If you're trying to gain mass, you're trying to add muscle, you have to increase your calories. It's going to be the, the best way to do it, especially once your protein needs are taken care of. And if you're diabetic and you have a very hard time processing carbohydrates. You probably want to work with your physician, but you may consider a diet that doesn't have as many carbohydrates in it because you have a very hard time processing them. So I want to thank again, Dr. Lowry, for letting me talk to him. Very cool stuff. And I just want to share some of that stuff with you. Any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Again, it's Mike T. Nelson for ExtremeHumanPerformance.com. Thank you very much.